All right, welcome back everybody to another episode of Chasing Ghosts. This is the video series where I look at those hard to find, those tough books, those things you just no don't normally see up on the wall at your LCS when you go in there on Wednesday to pick up your books. Uh, these are just hard to find comics. They're just either high incentives, super expensive books, tough to find exclusives in some way, could be rare for one reason or another, uh, and just fun little things just to make you guys aware of if you didn't know about them already. Just stuff that I like looking into and like sharing that information with uh, you viewers out there. So hopefully you're enjoying that as well as all the other content here on Renovision. Let me know what you think in the comments. Please like, subscribe, hit the alert button so you don't miss anything. Tell your friends so we can keep growing the channel. Check out the live shows we do on Wednesdays and Sundays with the tax show on Wednesday and the Star Wars show on Sundays. A lot of fun in the live chats and uh, come join the fun if you aren't already. And like I said, if you want to see what books I got for you this week, I do have a similar thread following through on all of these. Uh, just hang on for a few seconds after the intro and I'll be right back with this week's books. Okay, so as I kind of teased there in the open a little bit, I do have a thread that's running through all of the books that I chose today. I noticed on my list I had a couple done by this same artist, so I figured, you know what? Let's dive a little deeper. Let's look for a little more, and let's see what's what. Let's see if we have any real true ghosts in the Stephen Platt collection. So I know everybody knows Platt from the old days back on Moon Knight. He also did Profit back in Image. He's not an artist that has was very prolific. There's not a ton of his art out there, but it's very distinct and very like unique kind of like style. Not everything was a hit. There's a couple of misses, even in this Moon Knight run. Like that issue 58 ain't the greatest cover, if you ask me. But there are some really good ones mixed in there as well. Uh, like I said, just an interesting take, a very uh, unique artist, and just some books that uh, aren't that easy to find. He does have some exclusives that are a little bit tough. So let's take a look at what those are. And that's kind of where I started my little jumping off point here. Decided to do a whole Stephen Platt sort of uh, chasing ghosts episode, which we will start with, as I mentioned, Profit, this 1995 San Diego Comic-Con edition. So 95 is a long time ago now. Uh, this goes back a ways. And you're talking about an exclusive at the convention for an image book. How many of these are still out there somewhere? God only knows. But uh, as I noted, this was July 1995. This has come out at San Diego Comic-Con. No idea what the print run might be on this one. Uh, I mean, there might be some information out there where they said, oh, we printed 1,500. Who knows? But even whatever that print run might have been stated at the time, who knows how many survived? So with that, what do we got else to look at on this book? Uh, we got the CGC census, which tells us there are only six total on this one in there. Uh, two nine eights, three nine fours, and a nine oh. Though that's the total census for this book. And lately, I have been checking, at least for Chasing Ghosts, the CBCS population report as well. Couldn't find one on their population report, but it's not surprising. Their uh, their census is not as well stocked as CGC's. It's it's a newer process, so they're building it out. But with only six on the CGC side, it's not surprising that there aren't any on CBCS at the moment. Who knows where the future will bring, you know, but are there any copies for this out there? If you want to go hunting, there actually are. There are some options, uh, 80 bucks up to 150 bucks. Really? Uh, there are a few out there. So, uh, these might be the only three I think I could find, but uh, there's three options. Uh, surprisingly, not super cheap, but not terribly expensive. And, uh, can any sell? Well, there was a sale. Best offer, $110 on January 7th, where they accepted 70 bucks. All right. So still accepted just under the cheapest copy that's out there right now. Not, not, not too bad, really. But there are copies. So maybe not ghost per se yet, but we'll see. We'll make the call at the end once we go through the full list. And I'm going to kind of hit this list up chronologically. So that was 95. And we're going to jump all the way ahead to 2001, I believe, with this one, with this vampy cover. Uh, pretty cool. I mean, you can see some of the, 
inspirations he has. I mean, at times you look at Platt's art, you see a little bit of hints of, you know, Liefeld, unfortunately, where he came out, of, I believe, out of Liefeld Studio. Uh, but you still see like the little bit, little hints of Silvestri, even moments of Michael Turner, the little bit of Jim Lee kind of touched in there. You got some McFarland. There's a lot of different inspirations that I can see in his art. And that's what kind of makes it his own kind of look uh, personally. Uh, but this book, as I said, November 2001 was limited to only 1,500 copies. This uh, variant for Vampy number 12, uh, this Stephen Platt cover. Again, limited edition. And it wasn't just this cover. The, apparently, outside of this limited edition cover, there was also a hollow foil version, which I don't have much information on. I just know that there is a hollow FX version that you can see where the the creator's names are kind of taken off of. And it's going to be a little bit of a more of a shinier chromium kind of looking thing. Uh, but yeah, just not a lot of info on it. So I don't know how many uh, were printed of that one, how many of those might be out there, but it does seem to be a bit tougher than the uh, 1500 limited edition. But when we hit up the census to see what we got for both, we have uh, a whopping one copy of the limited edition version. So we got one 9.8 and that's it. And for whatever reason, uh, when I hit up the hall of foil edition, there are nine. Uh, Five copies in 9.8, two 9.6s, and two 9.4s. Surprising. I was thinking maybe the hollow foil is the same as the limited edition, but when you look at that limited edition, it's not it's not foil, so it's not the same. There's got to be two versions out there. Uh, there's got to be two versions. So uh, what the print run is on the hollow foil, don't know, but there are more in the senses of that than there are of the other. So keep that in mind as well if you go out there shopping. And if you want to see what's listed for sale, we've got two of the limited to 1500 the regular version i guess 60 bucks to 70 bucks and uh yeah you can see that has the little bit of the creator names down here the stanley lao and uh conway and tam their names are down there on the bottom corner on the limited edition whereas the hall of oil appears to have again a more of a virgin take on the cover or closer to it uh and what's actually sold uh for this recently well on this one there one that sold for uh 21 dollars Granted, they listed it as only a fine plus copy, so it wasn't the greatest copy in the world, but one still sold for as cheap as 21 bucks on this. But no copies of the Hall of Oil available or sold, so none. So I couldn't get a good picture or good uh, good look at the market on that one, unfortunately. So with that, we'll move on to our next book. As we jump ahead from 2001, we're going to jump ahead more than a decade to the year of 2012, where we're going to have a stream of books well maybe not a stream but we got quite a few variants coming now from 2012 because apparently 2012 Stephen platt decided you know what i'm coming back to comics i'm going to be giving you guys a bunch of high incentive variants and uh see what you guys think of them our first one being this avengers x sanction number two from january of 2012 one in 50 incentive on this one so this was a higher incentive book but with a solid print run of about fifty eight thousand. That one in 50 incentive still going to yield us uh, close to 1,200 copies. So uh, not too not too bad. It's a healthy print run on this. But pretty cool Iron Man and uh, Cable cover there with Cable with that huge sword just attacking. I kind of dig it. Put it in the rain. It seems like a you know old school action movie fight. Uh, but definitely a cool cover. What we got in the census for this? We only have nine copies uh, graded out for this variant. Six nine eights and three nine sixes. So uh, definitely not too many. And once again, none in the uh, CBCS population report. Listed for sale. This one, the prices are kind of all over the place. We have a nine eight asking 300 bucks. We have a raw asking only $16 from Canada, as well as a raw asking $120. All over. So it's apparently it's cheap. It's not cheap. I, I don't know. It, I just, I don't see this on the shelf. So I don't know, but we do have copies out there. If you want to buy one, and apparently one is cheap as 16 bucks. Not too bad. I might even consider it at that price, but at the same time, it's not apparently out of the realm of the market because in November one sold for $13 and back in October one sold for six bucks, a one in 50. I get it. Avengers X Sanction wasn't the you know top ranking highest critically acclaimed you know miniseries out there, but still this is not an easy book. And like I said, I think it's still a pretty cool cover personally. But uh, maybe I'm just biased. Maybe my uh, my little bit of a 
affinity for Stephen Platt art is misplaced. I don't know. Like I said, I admit not all of it's great, but uh, some of these are pretty solid covers. And I do kind of like this one. And I would definitely pay six bucks for this in a second. I'd pay 13 in a heartbeat too. But I don't know. Maybe I'll pay that 16. We'll see. We'll see if you guys buy it before I get to uh, once this video drops. But we're going to move on. So this was in January of 2012. We're going to move on to this Uncanny X-Force number 25. Pretty cool team shot with everybody coming at you. This uh, more of a Strike Force uh, Black Ops type version of the uh, X-Force team. This came out in May of 2012. Also a 1 in 50 incentive because for whatever reason, a lot of 1 in 50 incentives done by Platt in the year of 2012. But Nightcrawler, Phantom X, Deadpool, Wolverine, Psylocke, a great lineup and a pretty cool cover. And I like the blue with the pop of pink from Nightcrawler in the background. It is uh, not too shabby, if you ask me. Estimated print run is uh, also pretty solid. A little, almost 51,000 on this one. So we are looking at over 1,000 for the incentive. Just over 1,000 for the 1 in 50 incentive. Potentially out there. So there are copies. And if we check that census, we do have 29 in the census we have 15 nine eights six nine sixes a few nine fours and a few others not too bad and we actually do have a couple of copies on the cbcs population report for this one we've got two uh i don't know why they're broken out separately somebody mislabeled it as a uncanny x force dc but uh looks like we got a nine six and a nine two over on the cbcs population report for this same book so not too bad there as well and we do have a few listed for sale not a ton but we do got three. We got Raw's asking 150 to 250, and then we've got a 98 asking a solid 435 dollars on this. I don't know. Uh, I guess that's that probably makes sense as far as being a hard to find one in 50. Uh, again, thousand copies is not a tiny number, but it's still only a thousand. Plat X Force one in 50 incentive. All those things kind of do add up to a hefty uh, market price. But uh, what's it sell for? Just so we can kind of gauge what the asking prices are against the sale sales in, uh, well, 26 bids on January 12th. So only a few days ago, $103. This book is still has some interest. It's still demand 26 bids. That's a lot of action for that book. And then that nine, four had a best offer on it you know, of 115 bucks. And that was way back in October. So not a lot of copies selling, but, uh, eh, interesting, definitely interesting. So with that, we're going to move on to our next book. We're going to jump ahead from, uh, what month was that? May, I think? Or maybe we're looking at May here. No, I think that was May. So now we're going to jump ahead to Wolverine, number 310. Now, this is a popular book. This is a more well-known book. This was from July of 2012. This is a 1 in 100 incentive. So much steeper, much steeper, higher incentive, a little bit tougher than our last couple. But with an estimated print run of uh, just, you know, almost 61,000, there are a decent amounts still, even for that 1 100 with potentially 608 copies. It's, again, it's not a ton, but it's not minuscule either. It's uh, more than I would have thought for a 1 100. But still, pretty cool. Classic cover, saber tooth, Wolverine, skull, claws going through the skull holes. Pretty awesome image. What does this 1 in 100, 100 have in the census? It's got a healthy 61 copies. 42 9 8s, 13 9 6s, and a few others. And we even have a few in the CBCS population report where we have four. We got two 9 8s, a 9 2, and a 9 0 over on the CBCS side, if you are interested. And what do we have for sale? Any? We got one. We got a single copy out there right now. Looks like a SS Signature Series 9 4 asking a. $2,800. Now, I'm not a huge signature guy, and it's kind of hard to gauge the prices when you're dealing with signature series because that one attracts a different type of collector, uh, one that's willing to usually pay a bit of a premium for signature and or signatures if there's more than one. So uh, it's not always apples to apples. So that's why it's kind of tough for me to utilize the pricing information personally when dealing with the uh, signature series, and I try to avoid it because you don't know. You don't know what the buyer's intentions were, why they paid as much as they did, or, or why they're asking as much as they are. Are they asking because of the signatures? Could be hard to find signatures. They could be signatures of people you don't get signatures from a lot. So that's what the bulk of the price is. Or is the bulk of the price because this is a hard-to-find incentive variant. Who knows? That all being said, that's the only one I could find out there right now. 
and uh, none sold in the last couple of months either. So uh, there we have it. Not a lot, not a lot on the market around this Wolverine 310. But I didn't know if you were aware. I mean, most people, I guess, are, but th this isn't even the highest incentive. There was also a 1 in 200, which is the black and white version of this cover, which, again, I'm not a huge black and white cover guy. I generally only like a few artists who do it. Like, I like the Jim Lee black and whites, the sketches, because they're usually pretty pretty fine detailed and pretty close to the end product. Uh, and that's kind of the case here, too. This black and white looks pretty good uh, to me. But like I said, that's not my main uh, collecting habit. Like, I usually avoid the sketches because they're not my favorite things in the world. But again, July 2012, this is a 1 in 200 incentive. So like I said, it's harder to find than that other one. But that's going to give us half as many uh, copies as the last one. So when it was like 600, so we only have like 300 of this one. And if we want to check the census on this black and white 1 in 200, the sketch cover, as they call it, there are still 46 in the census. Uh, with 1898s, 1996s, and then a few others. But 46 ain't too bad if the total print may only be closer to 300. Just saying. But if you want to go check the market for this one, you're uh, going to be out of luck. There's none out there right now. And uh, there have been uh, none sold recently either. So uh, this one's kind of tough. But 1 in 200, that shouldn't be too surprising. Which is going to take us, surprisingly... Over to DC, didn't all this Marvel, all this Marvel, but we got a Batman cover. So Platt did a Batman cover, still here in 2012. This was in October of 2012. He hopped over to DC to give us this 1 in 25 incentive. So much lower ratio than uh, those Wolverine books. Uh, pretty cool uh, Batman Joker cover. So what do we got here on Legends of the Dark Knight, number one, the 1 in 25 incentive? Well... It had a healthy print run of about 43,000 thereabouts. So the incentive is going to be also pretty healthy with about 1,700 copies. We can check the census. There are 34 in the census with 2398s, 796s, and a few others. And uh, none in the CBCS uh, population report. But given that there are 1,700 of these, it shouldn't be too much of a surprise that there are copies available. If you wanted to go shopping for one of these online right now, they're just kind of pricey uh, for being uh, 125s. I mean, look, the Raws are asking 100 to 130, and then we got a 90 asking 160, and then a 98 asking 325 right now. But those are some uh, solid prices for a 1 in 25, but it's a book I don't see. I don't know if you see this at your shop, but I don't see it. Uh, Though we did have one sale over the last couple of months at auction, only 46, only 46 bucks with 13 bids back in November. So uh, I don't know. It's also kind of interesting. So not a lot of movement on this book and only the one sale that is you know, double ratio back a couple of months ago when it was at auction. So those buy it now uh, asking prices could sit for a little while until uh, interest and awareness, I guess, reaches them. And uh, so that wraps up our 2012 Stephen Platt variants. But I do have one more, uh, one more that was on my list separately. And it's going to jump all the way into 2013. <laughs> all the way. But no, just basically the next year, we do have this pretty cool Nova number four cover. I like this. I wouldn't have even guessed this was Platt. This doesn't have a look uh, to me of Stephen Platt. This has like a, a um, Ed McGinnis kind of a look to it personally. Uh, or Humberto Ramos, Joe Mad, that kind of a more of an animated uh, kind of style than uh, the normal sketchier uh, yeah, bits that Platt usually gives us. But this was from May 2013, also a 1 in 50 incentive, so a higher ratio on this book. Pretty cool cover. Uh, and I do like this for uh, Sam Alexander. This is uh, one of the variants I would hunt for for him personally. Uh, estimated print run of about 38,000 on the regular issue, so that's going to calculate our incentive down to about 763-ish, thereabouts, if you do that kind of quick math. So not a ton, not a ton. CGC Census has only seven copies uh, listed with 498s and 96 and 294s. So definitely not a lot in the CG census, CGC Census. And then the CBCS Population Report has a pair of 96s on their side. So still under 10 graded across both companies. Uh, ain't a lot. Definitely is not a lot. And if we check the market on this, there are copies, surprisingly. There are multiple copies. We got a 
Signature Series 9.6 asking 350. We got a 9.8 asking 500 bucks. And then we had a couple of Raws looking for about 140 to 270. Not a cheap book. So it's definitely an expensive one. And it's going to be a tough one for me to add to my collection because I don't know if I want to, you know, uh, shell out these kind of bucks right now. Well, though it is a pretty cool cover, a high incentive ratio for a character that a lot of people are still speculating on with Sam. But we'll see. And if you want to check what's sold recently, uh, well, unfortunately, there are none. So no copy sold recently to get any sort of market on that. But uh, that's it. That's my list of uh, Stephen Platt uh, variants, basically. And uh, as you can see, most of these are hard to find. Many of these are very expensive. But I don't know if we can call many of these ghosts, really. I mean, when we look at them, uh, there are multiple copies of all of these books, as expensive as they might have been, as cool as the covers might be. Uh, I got to just call most of these from the Prophet to the X-Force, the Avengers and Black Dark Knight and the Nova. These are only hard to find. Uh, there, there are multiples out there for most of these. So uh, we really can't call them ghosts. But if we look at that Wolverine 310, however, the one in 100 and the one in 200, between the two of them, there's only a single copy. And as a signature series, which kind of puts it out there out of my... Uh, my shopping list anyway. So to me, there's still no copies, but with only the one copy across both incentives and then that vampy, the hollow foil version, not the uh, limited edition, limited edition. We can throw that in the hard to find, hard to find side, but that hollow foil didn't see any, couldn't find any on them uh, sold or available. So for those, I feel comfortable calling at least those couple of books ghosts this week, because again, between the three books, we only had one copy available uh, on the interwebs. Or at least eBay, I should say. I shouldn't say the interwebs because there are a lot of other little places and uh, nooks and crannies out there where you might be able to find some of these books. But if you are looking, happy hunting. Thank you for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed this Stephen Platt. Uh, I don't want to say retrospective because I thought about doing an artist retrospective, but uh, it just takes a lot more time to do than throwing something like this together. So I decided to just do a little bit of Chasing Ghost uh, kind of spotlight on Platt instead. Hopefully you like that. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, give me some more suggestions. I did get some good suggestions this week of some more books that I'll be looking at in the weeks ahead. Uh, so again, keep throwing me out, out the suggestions to me because I will use them. I will work that stuff into what I do. I appreciate the engagement from you guys. Uh, I appreciate when you guys tag me and share your Instagram photos of your collection. Like, if you have any of these books, feel free to tag me. I'd love to see them. Uh, I don't have any of the books that were on today's list, uh, personally. I'm looking for them, but I don't own any of them. So uh, I'm happy to see yours if you have them. So tag me uh, at Renovision uh, on Instagram, and I will be happy to take a look at uh, you know, your books, your collection. Uh, I enjoy seeing stuff like that, and I appreciate the engagement with you guys. Uh, please like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Keep telling your friends so we can keep growing this thing. And with that all said, I'm going to leave it at that for this week, and I will see you soon with some more content. Later.